Hey friends, this is just a friendly warning. The video you are about to see contains lots of video of spiders, close-up shots of lots and lots of spiders. In fact, the whole video is nothing but spiders. So if you don't get into that kind of thing, you might want to back out now. Also, I will warn you, it's handheld macro photography. So it gets a little wobbly and shaky in many places. So if that also annoys you, you can back out now. But before you go, you can still link and subscribe, you know, like and subscribe to thank me for this generous warning before you get into that. Also, if you still don't like spiders, but you're willing to hang around, if you just skip ahead to the last minute of the video, I have some cute video of my little bitty granddaughter who is not a spider as kind of a palate cleanser so that's what you can do and otherwise just yeah just sit back and listen to me talk about spiders for a little while it's fun they're nice they're cute they're interesting so let's roll it This is one of my favorite spiders, Steatota borealis. It's also called the northern cobweb weaver, or sometimes the northern false widow, because it somewhat resembles a black widow and comes from the same family, the Theridiidae. It's far less dangerous, though, and also a bit smaller. They are called the northern cobweb weaver because they're only found in Canada and the northern half of the U.S. These are our native spiders. The Ojibwe and Dakota who lived in this land before us probably knew this spider, although I don't know that they paid much attention to them. They're small and leave people alone. As you can see, this one is just scampering about in my hand, and we're no threat to each other, so I'm not at all concerned about being bitten. I also like their colors. Some, sometimes they're so dark to appear black, but in the right light you can see shades of dark red and purple. They have a lighter colored anterior dorsal and horizontal stripe, and their markings tend to be tan or even orange. It's a subtle color scheme, not garish at all. They're the quiet goth kids from the neighborhood. Sadly, I haven't been able to raise them in the lab. I've caught a few and put them in roomy cages, and they tend to huddle down near the bottom and aren't very active at all. They certainly haven't produced any egg sacs for me but there may be a reason for that. Last year, a neighbor told me about all the spiders living in his compost bin, and I had to check it out. It was swarming with Steatota borealis. Let's take a look in this compost bin. It's full of soil and rotting vegetables, like a good compost heap should be. But there's also all this fluffy, dirty brown material over the lid and lots of cobwebs on the sides. Uh, that's all spider silk. And if you can see clearly, I, I doubt the video is detailed enough for you, uh, you'd see lots of dark purplish orange spiders everywhere. What's cool about this is these spiders are flourishing in a parasocial community. Parasocial is a word that has some bad connotations on human social media. It's often used as a pejorative. But all it means is that these animals are not eusocial, like ants or bees, but they do live in a communal arrangement sharing a nest. It's a good thing. This kind of thing has been seen in many species of spiders. It would be interesting to learn if Steatota borealis also took the next step up in parasocial living from communal, that is just sharing a nest, to quasi-social, sharing a nest and brood care. Theridiidae do groom and guard their egg sacs, so it's possible I just have to get a few generations growing in the lab where I could observe them and see if they share in 
taking care of egg sacs. So I captured a few by sweeping them into vials with a paintbrush. I had this idea. If this was the kind of environment they favored, with lots of moist soil nearby and insects hatching out continuously, maybe the way to raise them was to simulate a compost heap. I have a bunch of these clear acrylic display cases and I just shoveled in a little dirt from the yard, added some wooden coffee stirrers for them to climb on, and put in a slice of apple. Then I added a dozen wingless fruit flies that would dine on the apple as well as laying eggs in it to produce future generations of flies in perpetuity, or at least as long as I added fruit now and then. Getting wingless flies is important. Otherwise, every time you lifted the lid, you'd get a cloud of flies escaping. So I added three Steatota borealis, and as far as I can tell, the spiders liked it. They've been very active, and within days, the box was filled with cobwebs everywhere. They were far more lively than the spiders I'd put in sterile, empty plastic boxes. So right now, the interior is densely matted with spider silk. All right, if you look a little more closely here, there's, there's a nice little spider posed for us. But you can also see that those coffee stirrers are just covered with silk all over the place. There's a dense, sticky cobweb all throughout the terrarium right now. And also, as we'll see, the flies are thriving. Despite the fact that a spider will occasionally snatch one up and eat a fly, there's uh, plenty of them on the old apple. And I'm seeing larvae and pupae popping up. It's a reliable food source. And if the spiders were to eat a whole generation, no problem. I've got more in the lab that I can just toss in. I also gave them a mealworm in case the spiders were interested in bigger game. Uh, yeah, they, they were... They were. They they eat that worm pretty quickly. Uh, you might have noticed its desiccated corpse lining attached to one of the sticks as we drew, as we pass by. Allow me to introduce you to the denizens of this terrarium. This is Beatrice. She is a large female, the one you saw playing on my hand earlier. Like most of the sp spiders in this family, her hobbies are spinning a hammock and lying motionless in it for most of the day. I think she does a uh, lot of a cobweb spinning at night and occasionally scuttles down to the apple for a snack. This is Lydia, a smaller female who sensibly likes to spend most of her day resting. As a healthy ambush predator, this is a good use of her time, conserving her energy until she needs to suck the juices out of a passing fly or wrestle a mealworm to the death. And then there's Randy, the male. Uh, he's larger than Lydia and smaller than Beatrice and typically more active than both. He's more slender than the females. Notice that his abdomen isn't quite as bulbous. And he has those gigantic pedipalps on the front of his face. Those are his sperm-carrying organs, and he would like to share their contents with either Beatrice or Lydia. He really doesn't care which. He's often on the prowl. Yeah, Randy is reliably the most active spider in the cage. I guess it's a male thing. He's got to he's got to prowl around and find somebody. Harry seems to be courting Lydia. There's a lot of tentative touching and leg waving going on, and maybe some singing. The Steatota borealis has some rough patches on the abdomen and cephalothorax they rub together to make a species-specific stridulation. 
I'm sorry, I'm not recording sound, and I don't have the kind of sensitive microphone that would pick it up. Lydia doesn't seem threatened or concerned. She even taps his abdomen. Playfully, maybe? Okay, a little anthropomorphism there. Uh, they don't mate, but this does seem to be a non-threatening, even friendly situation. Spiders get a bad rap. People always talk about females murdering their mates and males having to dart in quickly to do their business before they're envenomated. In this species, though, there isn't a huge difference in size between the sexes, so the male can hold his own. I've seen female Parasteatoda kill their mates, but it seems to be more a consequence of overcrowding because I used to raise them in small tubes. Now that I keep them in larger containers, six liters or more for one or two spiders, they get along much better, and I don't see that kind of violence, which I should describe as pathological. In these larger spaces, if a male tries to mate with a female and she doesn't consent, she just walks away. Here's Randy being rather aggressive with Beatrice. She doesn't respond, and he just leaves, probably to see if Lydia is around. The real tether, this is a good method for raising Borealis, requires one, or, one more outcome. I need to see egg sacs. If that works, the next step is to put together a half dozen of these terraria and raid the neighbor's compost heap one more time. I know, this isn't the prettiest picture and it's rather dark, uh, but what I've done is I've just done a focus stack so that you can see, you know, through focus series showing you the depth and complexity of the cobweb these spiders build in their cages. So yeah, it's uh, it's always kind of amazing how ably they are able to just scurry through this this maze of silk when I watch them. Okay, that's all I had to say. I you can see my patrons scrolling by there. Yeah, you can help me out by subscribing to patreon.com/pzmyers. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you there, and I'm, I promise to show you my my favorite granddaughter. This is Ileana playing at the park in Wisconsin near Eau Claire, throwing rocks, uh, and my wife making sure she doesn't fall in the river. Throwing some? Oh, you're talking about skipping rocks? Are you looking for some small rocks to throw? Mama, me like a bee. We're talking about you skipping rocks. Skipping rocks? We're talking about one, and, and, she, and she couldn't do it to them as well as you. Oh, okay. There's something I'm good at, huh? But I don't see any. I don't see any rocks? good skipping rocks here. <laughs>